here comes the Don. A lot of people wonder why Don is so mean. Don's always been mean. When Don was born, the doctor slapped him and Don punched him in the mouth. <laughs> here is Don Rickle. <laughs> I've seen Kirk in many, many movies. And I say from the bottom of my heart, as an actor, he's weak. <laughs> but Kirk... <laughs> you and I know, if you didn't have that little ripple in your chin, the freaky jaw, and the trick-or-treat voice, Chud! Who's there? Who's there? You'd be like the rest of us. Girls. <laughs> but Kurt, you've always had us at the house when you had the biggies over. The last big name they had was Lyle Talbot's cousin. <laughs> Al Bergman. But Kirk is a great star, and I've proven that many, many times, because every time I've come to his home, he's always been in... Leotard shorts, no sweatshirt, just standing in the middle of the room going, Lola! We threw some raw meat on the floor, he ate it and died. I will say to you as the audience out there tonight, Kirk Douglas knows Burt Lancaster personally. <laughs> Burt Lancaster would be here tonight, but he was in a circus act in Germany and climbed up the rope too fast. <laughs> and is now in his home in Malibu going, oh. <laughs> that one, Kirk. But I will never forget, and this is a true story, a little anecdote about Kirk Douglas. Kirk and his lovely wife, Ann, were celebrating their 19th wedding anniversary. And they had a little dinner party. And they said, Don, and they never told us it was their anniversary. True, Kirk? <laughs> and they invited us to their home. And my wife, Barbara, who... I married a lovely lady, God bless her. She is known to me as Valium. <laughs> when Pearl Harbor was attacked, she was the one that looked up and said, there's some destruction. <laughs> there's some dummy girl in the front going, I hope I find some guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, this is the truth. And Kirk said, we're going to have a little dinner party. And I said, fine, as you well know, Kirk. And Ann invited us, and Barbara and I pulled up, and I saw her in the driveway. And I do not say this because we all struggle in life to attain success. And I pulled up in the driveway, and I saw a Rolls Royce, and it said FAS1. And I got all excited. I said, Barbara, I'm so nice. that's his car. What a night. Frank Sinatra's here. My wife said, pull yourself together. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, don't be an idiot. Pull yourself together. You have all his albums. What are you going to do, go crazy? <laughs> we walked in there with 12 people, not stars. I figured you would see Gregory Peck's uh, Charlton Heston's That School. There was, a, there was Harry Dickman, Saul Katz, Lou Furco, Marco Gambonanzo, who I never asked what he did. Figuring I could be in the bay going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> cheer up, Kirk. <laughs> I said, uh, Kirk, it's an exciting night. And with that, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. And Dean Martin cherishes this man as I do. Because I got news. The guy we're talking about, really, in my, I can only speak for myself, I think that Dean would agree. He is like the thing, you know, it's like an image. And the shoulder. And the voice said, uh, hey, Pally, uh, how do you want the pizza? Crisp, crisp, crisp pizza? Pizza, crisp? 
I said, um, uh, what were you saying, Kurt? He said, and the guy, and in my new movie, these two people are coming up. What a picture we're doing. And there was, hey, come on, pal, I'm asking you three times now, how do you want the pizza? And with one turn, with a drink in my hand, I turned around and I said, Will you stop bothering me, Frank? I'm talking to people. I don't care how you make the pizza. <laughs>